Hello. Hi. We're the butts. Yep. I'm I'm Morgan. I'm Kitty. This time we are doing a review for the PlayStation 4 game Days Gone. You tried so hard to make that sound like yeah. it does the the name does not sound as creepy as it should for how creepy this flipping game was. Mm -hmm. And there'll be less of spoilers in this. Yeah, yeah. If you haven't played it yet, like, don't want to know what happens in the story, this is probably not the right video to watch. Do you want to start off with the story? Um, well, or, the setup, at least. Yeah, well, the, what the game is, an open world zombie game. Post-apocalyptic. Yeah. Zombie outbreak happened two years ago. You play as a motorcyclist, and you're driving around fighting zombies. Yeah, because I think we start on because the the um, main screen updates every time you load it, mm -hmm. like with how many days days gone, and you start at like seven sixty four or something like that, and you go up from there depending yeah. on how long it takes you to play the game. Mm -hmm. um, so you start off as Deacon St. John. Oh yeah, Deacon Saint. This is a great name. I mean, it, that that's a that's a good name for it's a hero. Apparently, it's based off an actual actor. Oh yeah, yes. Yeah. They, um, I mean, you can definitely tell in the, um, in the game that like they they took real people and like digitalized them or whatever, however you say that, and um, uh, had the actors do the voices and stuff and act out the scenes. It was just, which was nice because mm -hmm. you know sometimes in video games like watching the story stuff is kind of painful because the. <laughs> like, they, they spent more money and time on the gameplay, and mm -hmm. so then watching the little scenes is is kind of, you know, like watching a bad 1950s horror movie. Mm -hmm. But this was really good, yeah. I think. You want to go through the story? Oh yeah, sure. So, um, like Morgan said, it's two years since um, the world fell into chaos. You, you don't get, um, in the beginning, you don't get a sense of really what's going on. You know that the world, um, that we're post-apocalypse. But we're in a very small, like, we're in Oregon. We're in northern Oregon. We don't know exactly where. We're near the Cascade Mountains somewhere off of the I-5. Um, and you know that the, the world has sort of, um, or at least this section of the world, has sort of fallen into chaos. And there are people called drifters who... Um, who use motorcycles. And it, at first I thought the motorcycles was kind of contrived, but then, like... You know, you drive around and like these. Um, uh, there's been these big crashes and these and roadways have fallen apart and stuff. And so you need the motorcycle to get around these things that a normal car couldn't get through. So that kind of made sense. I thought that was a nice little twist, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and then you've got marauders who are running around, mm -hmm. um, like killing people, stealing things. Um, and then you've got the camps. Mm -hmm. and the two camps we meet at first are not very nice. One of them's a uh, um, freedom nut. Yeah, very um, much a conspiracy the theorist. theorist um, like hates the anti-government, anti-federal government, anti -federal government mm -hmm. anarchist. Kind of, well, not anarchy exactly, yeah, but a like, separate anarchist. Yeah, there are a, is a separate, um, but a very like you know, don't step on my rights, don't tread on me mm -hmm. kind of guy. Probably had a bunker and a stash of guns before everything went down. Yeah. <laughs> And then there's a forced labor camp. Yeah, the um, lady in charge of that used to work at a prison. Yeah, used to work at a prison. And she runs her camp pretty much the same way. Yeah, like a like, like she she calls it a work camp, but once people come in, they're not allowed to leave, mm -hmm. and you have to work. And we see a lot of violence in sort of the background while we're there. Yeah. Um, and then, but these camps are where you can get supplies for your bike, supplies for your, you know, like if you need guns and bullets and stuff like that, and um... Yeah, the game starts off with Deacon gets ambushed. Or Deacon's uh, going around yeah. killing people, or killing zombies, and his bike gets stolen and parted out. That's right, so yeah. So the crux of what drives the story forward at that point is you have to do missions for these camps to get things to upgrade your bike. Because your bike's been turned into a piece of crap. <laughs> yeah. And you and Deacon and his best friend Boozer. Boozer. Are wanting to leave, but you can't do that without a good bike. Yeah, they wanna what, what did they say? They wanted to head north? I think so. They were gonna head north. Um well then Boozer like so then there's these other characters floating around. We haven't even gotten to the zombies yet. There's a mm -hmm. lot of stuff floating around mm -hmm. in this game. Um there's these other characters called Rippers. 
um, floating around. And they are just crazy cultists who have decided that the zombies are the way to go, like, mm -hmm. kind of thing. That the zombies are, like, to be worshipped. I think so. They they kill other people. They torture themselves. Yeah, they, like, they, they cut themselves, themselves. They, or they, really they carve themselves. Yeah, they carve themselves, and then they they capture other people and carve them up um, to get them to join. And they use some sort of drug. Yeah. Um, to make themselves like not crazy strong, but just crazy. Like they don't mm -hmm. feel pain and some or. You know, like, I mean, hell, they light themselves on fire and then run at you and try and hug you so that you can burn with them. Like, it's some, it, it's some disturbing stuff. But they get, so story-wise, they get a hold of Boozer and they burn Boozer's arm. And then a huge part of the story for quite a while is you trying to keep Boozer alive because you don't have any medicine. It's a, it's a third degree burn. Uh, he, it's, he gets infected. Oh, like, um, Boozer's the last friend you got in the world yeah. kind of thing. Because it also shows through flashbacks that mm -hmm. Deacon had a, had a wife, or had a wife, and on the day everything goes crazy, they get separated. She gets stabbed, put on a... On a Nero chopper. Yeah, Nero was like a military... It's definitely supposed to be FEMA. Like, it, I mean, it's... Yeah, National Emergency Response Organization. Organization, yeah, which is totally a ripoff of, or not ripoff, but like they couldn't say FEMA, but it's definitely yeah. supposed to be FEMA. Um, she goes off with them. The camp that they go to gets overrun by zombies. Yeah, overrun by freakers, which is what they call them in the yeah. in the games, because they're not technically dead. We learn that mm -hmm. as we're moving through the story too. Is it's some sort of virus? It yeah. doesn't actually kill the person that just made it sort mutates. of yeah sort of 28 days later ish mm -hmm. no kind of mutation crazy but they do eat you like in which is why the the rippers don't go out and just go like hey bite me make me a zombie mm -hmm. too like oh well, um because the zombie's not gonna bite you it's just literally gonna eat you yeah um uh and apparently you can't you don't get the virus from being bitten yeah i'm really i don't think they ever explained how the Viruses spread. spread. Yeah, um, I think there's. I mean, I'm sort of guessing there's a uh, um, immunity level. I'm so from a m medical perspective, every virus has 10 to 15 percent of the population that's just immune. It just doesn't really affect them. Um, even the most virulent viruses have that. Like they don't. They don't wipe out 100 percent mm. of people. Um, so I'm guessing that's what we're looking at here because like. You got these people who, I mean, we definitely got bit multiple times. We see other people get attacked by freakers, get scratched, get bitten, yeah. get saved. Yeah, and some animals are infected. But not all animals are infected. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. So we're lamenting. We definitely got some, some issues from losing our wife. Mm. Who seems, I have to admit, in the flashbacks, pretty freaking cool. Yeah, she's like, very cool. He's Deacon St. John is definitely like the, your typical biker. Well, maybe not typical, but like he's a you know he's a biker. He belongs to a biker gang yeah. in Oregon. He has this code and yeah, like um, he used to be in the army. He was a um, I think he was in the Marines. I'm mm. not sure if they're ever super specific about that, but um, he talks about being deployed to Afghanistan multiple tours and. Mm. Uh, and then he comes back and he can't really fit back in, so he gets involved in this biker gang, um, which ends up being a, a fairly positive thing for him, I'm guessing. Yeah. Like, it doesn't seem like a. Well, he finds it's like a place to belong. Yeah, sort of thing. Um, although, definitely a violent mm -hmm. biker gang. Like, they were probably running drugs. I mean, they never really say what the gang was up to, but. Yeah, we find out later the gang. I mean, this is spoilers, but yeah. the leader of the Rippers was a former gang member, member and they burned off his tattoo. Yeah, they like, kicked held him, him down. Yeah, but they and they never say why they kicked him out, but they kicked him out for doing something that was so gross that even the rest of the gang members were like, "Nah, dude, you gotta go." But you get tattooed mm. with like the the gang symbol on your back when you get initiated. And they're like, "You your gotta go," back. and you yeah, and you can't. You can't take that with you. So they hold him down and they burn it off. And Deacon St. John definitely participated mm -hmm. in that, um, which is... Which is part of the reason why they 
do that to Boozer. Yes. They start burn off his, his tattoos. His tattoos. Yeah. But and it turns one, out to be like a revenge thing. And at one point, Dingus Khan, they burn off one of his, his tattoos. tattoos. Um, so back to Boozer. So we're running around. We're doing things for the for the camps to try and get um, supplies and stuff that we need for our bike for to keep Boozer alive. Um, well, then Boozer gets sick. Mm-hmm. Like, really sick. Definitely gets infected. De- yeah. And so Boozer's dying. Yeah, and not not zombie affected, but like his wound gets yeah, infected. Yeah, you know, like he doesn't have antibiotics. He's in a third degree burn. Um, so with no other choice, we find out that there is a third camp mm-hmm. called Lost Lake, where we have been kicked out of. We're not supposed to go back to Lost Lake. Mm-hmm. Um, Iron Mike runs Lost Lake, um, and uh, but we decide it's the only place that has a doctor. So we decide to go there um, because otherwise Boozer's going to die. And so we take Boozer there and they take us in. Um, I was a little contentious for a second, (laughs) but apparently there was some sort of disagreement um, about... So up until now, if we rescue people on the road, we tell them about the camps. Like, hey, you're going to die out here. These, These marauders, rippers... Um, zombies are going to kill you, mm-hmm. but I know a safe place, which is what the camps are, is a safe place. It actually gives you a choice of which... Which camp to send them to. Some camps give you more money for people than others, like the forced labor camp will mm-hmm. pay you for sending someone to them. Lost Lake is morally opposed to that. Yeah, right? they don't pay. <laughs> yeah, they, they call it slave, which is what it is, slave mm-hmm. trading. And, um, and From a gameplay perspective, there is a point to sending people to each camp because oh. some camps have upgrades for your bike yeah. other camps have upgrades for your guns or new guns and you need to build up trust and money within each separate camp yeah, yeah. so if you like send, your money at one place doesn't doesn't translate to the other place same thing with the trust level well yeah so, and it's it was actually a really good hmm? mechanism yeah. like, so like if you wanted to get a bike upgrade from one of the camps you need to build a trust and you like do missions turn in yeah. bounties or send people you've rescue to them yeah which sometimes was gross mm-hmm. we did it anyway mm-hmm. <laughs> gotta give that need a bigger fuel tank yep needed a yeah god our fuel tank was so small at the beginning mm-hmm. we would run out of fuel in the middle of nowhere <laughs> and then like all the zombies would come and it was really scary <laughs> like, yeah. so we go to lost lake and yeah a new camp mm-hmm. and we had to do missions feeling like everyone to stay you, you have to it. work yeah yeah but not in a gross way like if you're gonna stay and we're gonna feed you, you have to like um, you have to help us run the camp. Yeah. You can leave anytime you want because that's the big difference between mm. Lost Lake and like and what Hot Springs, which is the forced labor camp, mm. is that like once you're in, you can't leave. Like they don't let you leave. Um, Lost Lake is more like if you're gonna stay, you have to work. If you don't want to work, that's cool. But you have to leave, uh, which is a little different than yeah. <laughs> You now belong to us. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. um, it's one of those things, like, they're doing us a favor by keeping Boozer there yeah. and helping him. Like, we try to help out to pay it back. back. Yeah, pay that back. Because, of course, money doesn't really matter anymore. You can't spend money on yeah, anything. They, they deal with ears. Yeah. With- so, I, I sort of understood that. Like, so you, you could earn credit in the camps... By turning in the ears of freakers that you had or zombies you had killed, and it's sort of like a hey, if you're out there risking your neck to kill zombies, mm. you are making it safer for our camp. So we will give you credit that you can use to buy stuff to help you go out and kill more, yeah. kill more um, zombies. So I sort that that seemed like a fair system to me. Mm. Well, like, um, yeah. So we do missions for them. Um, the biggest plot point at that point is Iron Mike, who's the leader of the Lost Lake camp, has a sort of treaty with the Rippers. With the Rippers, yeah. which no one believes work except for Iron Mike. Mike, and he's, and he's. Does he turn out to be right? I guess. I guess not. They violate the treaty because they want Boozer and Deacon, but I don't know if the treaty would have hold, held. Yeah. Well, also. We do things to violate it, and Schizo... Does things to violate 
violate it. Um, and the the Rippers are violating it too. Like mm. every month that he talks about, every month the Rippers are like moving in on more and more yeah. territory. And Iron Mike, in order not to like start a war, kind of thing, is like, okay, we'll give that up. Okay, we'll give that up. Yeah, and which is not smart. Yeah, and Schizo, who is like the second command for Iron Mike, wants to start a fight yeah. so, to wipe out the Rippers. Yeah, which is what we end up doing. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I like Iron Mike's philosophy, like, the world will be what you make it. Yeah. So if we try to be peaceful, maybe the world will be peaceful. Peaceful, yeah. Yeah, Iron Mike is, is definitely, like, your moral compass in the game. Because we're doing some things that are, you know, I mean, like, we don't kill anybody except out of survival, for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, but there are definitely some icky moral choices yeah. made in the game. Um, and, and Iron Mike is definitely like your Jiminy Cricket most of the time. Yeah. As far as like moral choices, you don't get to make choices in the game. Yeah, not like that kind of choices. Aside from like, you, you find random survivors, you can send them to a camp. You get to pick the camp. Yeah, but yeah. that's the only choice. Yeah, that's really it. And the only reason they're giving you a choice about that is because you don't, the game doesn't know which place you need credits at kind yeah. of thing. And it, as far as I can tell, when you send people to a camp, you don't really see them walking around. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't affect anything. No, no. But I just mean, like, throughout the game... I mean, we're a bounty hunter. Mm-hmm. That's... Because um, we're a tracker. So they send us out to find people that did something bad in the camp and bring them to justice, which yeah. is a very loose term of justice. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, and they send us out... Oh, they, they do send us on rescue missions a yeah, lot. We, we do go, rescue a lot of people. Um, but that rescuing a lot of people um, usually involves killing a lot of people, too. Yeah. We do wipe out whole camps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so then you get the big twist where we, like, we start, Nero shows up. We, we get this idea that, that Nero fell, you know, um, that the, this government organization, like, fell apart and they're gone. Well, then these black helicopters start showing up Mm -hmm. and we're like, okay, well, Nero's somewhere, uh, somewhere with enough fuel and, and like, Resources. Resources to maintain freaking choppers. So, yeah. like, um, uh, we, we start investigating that. We contact O'Brien. Uh, who turns out to be, we, well, we run, we're investigating a Nero chopper, mm-hmm. and we find O'Brien, who turns out to be the guy we gave our wife to yeah. in the first part of the game. Like, to, like, hey, take her, she's been stabbed, take her to a medical mm-hmm. unit. Um, and he tells us where she's going to be. And of course, when we show up there, it's been overrun by zombies. So we like, but if O'Brien is still alive, then where's our wife? Yeah. So, um, so we start doing missions for O'Brien, start doing some research and stuff, trying to figure out what Nero is up to. And in exchange, Brian, O'Brien says that he will try and track down what happened to Sarah Whitaker, which was our wife. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, so for a while there, you're a little bit hopeful that maybe, mm-hmm. maybe the wife's alive. Um, and we do all these missions and it turns out Nero's doing like all kinds of experiments on the, on the zombies and stuff. Um, and what they're finding is that the zombies are mutating. The virus is continuing to grow mm-hmm. and zombies are changing. Which from a like, gameplay perspective is a way to introduce new types of so zombies, zombies to fight. Yeah. So what we've got, we've got the swarmers, mm. which is the the sort of not weak, but like this they the travel standard. in packs. Yeah. Yeah. Standard, um, standard zombie. They were introduced to the albino. No. Yeah. The is... um, the uh, crap. What are those called? The albino ones. Albino. Bleachers. 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 Which are just stronger versions. They take more damage. They, they do more damage. More damage. Um, and then the breakers. Which are. Big old dudes. Zombies on steroids. Yeah. Literally Ble- zombies, zombies on, on steroids. steroids. Yeah. Um, and they, God, they just take, they take so much time to take down. Yeah. Like, they're so strong. And they take so much ammo and stuff to bring them down. Mm. Um, and they hang out in the daytime, which was weird. Because mm. most of the time, the zombies sleep during the day and yeah. come out at night. Yeah, the zombies are nocturnal during the day. You'll find some of them struggling around, but most of the time they hang out in caves. Yeah, they night, find they something wander. to yeah find something in like some sort of dark place to hang out. They build nests, mm. which is a part of the gameplay is clearing out infestation zones and getting rid of their nests and stuff. But, um, the more of these missions you do from your for O'Brien, the more zombie types are introduced. Yeah, and the more you learn about 
the backstory. Yeah, the more you get an idea of what happened two years ago. And we start to get an idea because at first I'm like, okay, so we're trapped in Oregon and like there's no, there's no electricity anymore. There's no um, running water. You know, I mean, like, you know, stuff like that. Um, there's no radio, like there's no cell phone signals. Like, but that doesn't mean that the whole world has been infected. Like, that doesn't mean that the whole world has collapsed just because our little corner of the world is. Mm -hmm. But as we go through the game, we do find out that this is yeah. this is worldwide and that all the governments have mm -hmm. have collapsed. It's spread very quick. quick. Yeah, and very far. Um, so this this is a thing for a while, like, you do missions for these camps, they send on racing missions. Orion sends you on these missions. This yeah, you that find takes that's... up a good chunk of the game. Oh yeah, huge part of the game. And it's but it's really like interesting gameplay because mm -hmm. like you oh, the, the whole open world thing. Like you'll stumble onto stuff and you'll just be like, what the heck? And then everything's trying to kill you. And then mm -hmm. you know like um, and the crafting recipes and and yeah. like figuring out. So yeah, it's not a bad. I found it to be a little bit repetitive. For it got, a yeah, it got a little te Cause, tedious. Yeah, because the camp will call you, hey, go rescue this person. You go, you drive somewhere, you kill the bad guys, you rescue the person. Then some other camp will tell you to do the same thing. Yeah. On the other hand, though, like, we knew which storylines would push the actual story forward. True. And we sort of, like, didn't. We were working on other stuff, mm -hmm. getting all the ambush camps, getting all that, you know, like, so we could have played through this a lot faster than we did. Yeah. Because then you find out that Sarah is dead. That the kid, they, he took O'Brien, took her to a different camp than the one that um, Deacon was told she was going to, because it had already been overrun by the time the chopper was going to land there. But he dropped her at a different camp, and that camp was overrun, mm -hmm. so she she is dead. Um, because only a couple of people who had like government security clearance and stuff like that got out from that. Yeah. Um, then we deal with the whole Iron Mike, the Ripper thing comes to a yeah, head. Yeah, it comes to a head. Because it turns out that Carlos, which is the, the head of the Rippers, is looking for us. Mm -hmm. Like, that's who he's that's who he's obsessed with. <laughs> like, they, um, but they end up attacking Floss Lake. Like, um, Iron Mike dies. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. When did Iron Mike die? At the end. He dies when the militia attacks. Oh, is it? Yeah, he doesn't mm -hmm. die from the Rippers. My bad. Yeah, jeez, spoiling the spoilers, jeez. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, no, the but the Rippers attack and they want to, they, they they think they've already got us. Like Deacon gets captured, and then they come for Boozer, and then they're gonna they're gonna take Boozer and Schizo sort of turns on Iron Mike and. Yeah, they captured they captured Deegan because he and Schizo are out on a mission. Schizo, mm. Schizo, Schizo, Schizo uh, um, knocks betrays him. Out. him. Yeah. yeah, and so but Deegan Deegan escapes and then blows up a dam mm -hmm. and drowns all of the Rippers. Yeah, <laughs> just like they, they, wipes them out. They have a main holdout. So, yeah, just pulls up the dam near them and like ants just like mm. uh, and then kills Carlos, yeah. which is the. Ripper leader. Yeah, the Ripper leader. And then comes back and saves Boozer um, and out Schizo as being the, a... a what traitor. You, traitor. That's the word I wanted. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then Iron Mike won't let us kill um, Schizo. Mm -hmm. And what, he exiles him, right? Yeah. Um, so, which is basic. I mean, really... Exiling in a world like this is basically death anyway. Like, he doesn't have a gun. He doesn't have, like, he, 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 <laughs> hope the freakers don't eat you. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, see you around, buddy. Um, so, and then, but that's when the the new part of the gameplay sort of opens up. Because yeah. after that is when we have the conversation with O'Brien. Like, hey, wait a minute. My wife, Sarah, did have clearance. Mm -hmm. She was, a, you know, like... She worked for this company. Yeah, and she's like, a scientist. This, yeah. And, and they had like a government contract in place she worked. Yeah. And so she did have the security. And it turns out she was rescued from the second camp. And there's every chance that she is still alive. Mm -hmm. But she's in a different part of Oregon. So this is when we lose, Bo we leave Boozer behind. Mm -hmm. We didn't even mention about Boozer getting his arm cut off. Yes. Yeah, nah, whatever. Yeah, he loses the arm. So now Boozer can't ride with us anymore. Because, you know, you can't. 
ride a motorcycle with one yeah. one hand. Or you can't drive one anyway. Um, so we leave, leave Boozer behind to go look for our wife in a just, different part of the game. Yeah, this opened up a new area of the map, which was... You had to drive through a mountain pass, which was previously blocked off. Yeah. Like, you had to go through a mountain range, and the one pass through there is blocked. Yeah. But events of the story happened, and you go down there and deal with a military camp. Yeah. And O'Brien tells you, like, well, I can't help you. And, like, he's like, oh, that's, you know, like, I can't go there. This military, this militia has set up in Crater Lake. And they've got all kinds of all kinds of stuff, including RPGs, which mm-hmm. can shoot, which have been have been shooting down Nero choppers. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, oh, so I, if you're going there, I can't help you anymore. You're on your own. And so wishes him luck. And that's the end of us and O'Brien for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, so we head out and find this militia and join, mm-hmm. um, looking for our wife, being real subtle about it. Because we don't want to let them know that there are camps on the other side of the Cascades. Yeah. Um, and uh, we meet the colonel, um, who is bat crap crazy. Just yeah. like all obsessed with God, and this is the second coming, and like the world is ending, and like mm-hmm. we have to try and preserve. Uh, um, but but that like degradation and. Um, yeah, his belief is the zombie in the outbreak is a result of the sinners. Yeah, and we brought this upon ourselves for being like for adulterers being and thieves and, and drug addicts, addicts. Are to cause of all this. Of this, yeah. Um, but we find Sarah there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, who is actually a lieutenant? No, uh, higher than that. Well, no, she's an officer in the army. Like yes. she can give us orders, which mm. is kind of funny because <laughs> we're just a corporal. Um, to be fair, mm-hmm. the major mm-hmm. actually has some good ideas. Mm-hmm. Very nice. He's preserving like he wants to just have a library. Mm-hmm. Yep. Trying to maintain some like knowledge and technology in these. Yeah, he's found a what is ba- and I, I believe this place actually exists. I'd I'd have to look it up. But Crater Lake has an um, a non-active volcano in the middle of it in the game at least, um, uh, in the middle of a lake. So they've they've set up like basically the perfect fortress. Like mm-hmm. it's water. The the zombies can't swim. Um, oh, you have two entrances from the back and the front. Oh, um, is the only way to get to it, which can be easily closed off. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see for miles around, so you can see if a horde's coming or if another militia is like gonna, gonna attack. And then you've got this physical, like he's filling up the the volcano, the mountain, with science textbooks and um, like medical and journal, medical journal, yeah, and art and a- anything they can salvage, basically, yeah. like any sort of. Um, he he's knowledge. preparing for. Like- once we take care of the zombies, we'll be able to start yeah. rebuilding the world, kind of thing. But he's, he like, said, yeah, you're right. Good, good ideas. Yeah, Everything but beneath the crazy. crazy. Yeah, there beneath all that is some very oh, they, like they publicly hang people. Yeah, for, for anything, yeah, any like step out of line a little bit. A bit, yeah. And it, I mean, he he runs it like an army, but uh, like a I don't know, like an Iranian army. <laughs> I mean, like I don't I don't even have a good. Um, yeah, it it's is. just really, really like crazy. Yeah. Um, um, but I mean, like he. On the other hand, he doesn't care if you're gay. He doesn't care if you're um, if you're a woman. Like he doesn't. He doesn't discriminate. Like he just. But if you've ever used drugs, you're the scum of the earth. If you've ever, you know, like. Um, an adulterer. Yeah, an adulterer. A forn. He uses the term fornicator. Mm-hmm. Like. Nobody in the camp is allowed to, or nobody in the militia is allowed to, like, be having relations with anybody else, which presents a problem longer, farther down the road. Like, if everybody's in the militia and no one's allowed to, like, how you gonna make babies? Like, how are we repopulating the earth here? Yeah. Um, but, uh, whatever. But so, being up running missions for them. For a while. And, and for a while, we're doing kind of cool stuff. And we're helping Sarah, who's working on some sort of bioweapon to fight the zombies. Mm -hmm. And then there's another guy who's working on um, an offensive weapon that turns out to be napalm. And I'm not impressed by that, because I'm like, (laughs) I know how to make napalm. (laughs) Like, take some styrofoam, Mm. take some gasoline, you got napalm, like, so that big reveal, because it was a big secret for a while, and then like, 
that big reveal was yeah. very lackluster. <laughs> like, okay, buddy, whatever. Yeah. Like, any any second-rate chemistry teacher could have told you how to make this. Oh, um, but Sarah is working on some sort of what you think is some sort of bioweapon to like take out the zombies all at once, like some sort of virus, you think. So you're going on missions for her and like finding stuff that she needs and um when she te- when she sends you out to get a freaker so that she can test her weapon. Mm-hmm. Um and so you bring her one. You go get like a, a little, what are they called? Newts? The yeah, little kids. Infected children. Tr- yeah, infected children, which I appreciated that about the game. Like not pretending like kids wouldn't Don't be infected. Exist. Yeah. Like, um, but uh, so you bring her one and she tries it and it works. Like the freaker like massively dies um, in this very dramatic scene. But then Sarah gets upset. That she died. And that's when we find out that Sarah's not trying to kill them. She's trying to cure them. Yes. Which was actually a pretty big twist. And very stupid. (laughs) 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 Which is... I mean, you see these people. The the freakers. And, like... They're they're not okay. There's no coming back from this. Mm -hmm. Like... I mean, it's obvious. Like, the way that their their muscles have warped. The way that the, the... brain has changed the way that the like even their eyes like the way that the they characterize it like there's there's no magic wand you're gonna wave and turn these these people back into people yeah some of them you could like maybe see them come back like the one they pick up is like bleeding from the eyes Eyes and mouth and like like, that was like before they yeah yeah. before yeah before you even expose them to anything like they're like they're not okay these people are not they're not coming back so this is sort of the the big reveal of the story like we find out that sarah is trying to cure the zombies Mm. and the general thinks she's trying to kill the zombies zombies, yeah is working on on a bioweapon and as we have said general not super generous about Mm. people not doing what they were told to do so now deacon who is unbelievably in love with sarah which was a really sweet part of the Mm -hmm the story in general like really loves this woman um and she's actually really freaking cool like really smart really dedicated handle herself oh yeah absolutely there are no i really appreciated that about this game there are no weak women like Mm -hmm. everybody who's still alive deserves to still be alive like they they held their own uh, in all kinds of ways um is what we've got ricky Ricky, she's, she's the best. Yeah, Ricky's, Ricky's pretty. my favorite. She's awesome, um, and then her girlfriend Addie, mm-hmm. went, and Addie's really cool, and like she's, she's the doctor. The doctor. Um, Lost, they're both at Lost Lake. Like yeah, and then um, and then we've got Sarah, who um, oh, who yeah, yeah, super freaking smart, and can hold her own like. Um, against Deacon, like even before all this went down, she's hanging out with all these bikers, like, <laughs> um, so. Uh, but anyway, so this is, this is where they decide, okay, well, well, I need a couple of things from the place where I used to work. Mm -hmm. This like super secret military establishment thing, uh, um, where I was doing super secret. Well, lots high security. Yeah. How about that? Very high. I mean, the dude almost shoots Deacon at the front gate when he comes to pick her up for lunch one day. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, so super high security, like, but she absolutely believed that nothing of her research was going to the military. Like, she genuinely believed that she was, like, doing... Because she was super into plants, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and she was doing research about, like, medical research. Yeah. Um, so they go visit this the old place to get a piece of equipment that she needed. Um, and along with a couple of other surprises when they... When they visit it, she finds out that this is the source of the virus. Mm-hmm. They created the virus at the place that she worked. And that it was all an accident. That some whistleblower was, and I don't say that in a like in a mean way or whatever, but there was an intern or something yeah. who, um, who believed that this um, military contract that the, that the organization had taken... And they were working on some sort of like super soldier serum or something like that. Um, and he was like opposed. He was like, he was trying to expose what this company was doing. 
um, very underhandedly, like, mm -hmm. and, but he takes a sample of the virus to, like, this big... Um, like Greenpeace conference. Yeah, like a Greenpeace conference in California, whatever, an international Greenpeace conference. It gets released. Every, everybody gets infected. Everybody then gets on planes and goes home. And then, and then... I think it's like within days. Days. Within days, the world is just overrun by... So, which was... I appreciated that they gave you some sort of explanation as to how this stuff became international. Because mm -hmm. that always bothered me. Like, how did they get across the ocean? <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like... Um, so, uh... But Sarah is devastated by realizing that some of her research contributed to this... Um, and this yeah, is when they... She had suspicions, I think. Yeah. Which is why she thought she could cure it, because yeah. using her yeah. research. Um, so this is when they decide to go AWOL from the military. Like, they're going to go back, they're going to get some stuff, and then they're going to leave and come back to this um, research place, and she's going to continue working on a cure, and Deacon has decided to help her. Mm -hmm. um, so they go back, but while they were gone, like, the colonel, like, lost it yeah because they had they had their own doctor, doctor yeah a drug guy that killed that doctor. doctor to get to get a couple of drugs yeah to get some narcotics he killed the only doctor that they mm. had so now the major it's forcing everyone to stay inside the yeah. volcano basically anyone who has knowledge that in his opinion can't be replaced which i mean like i understand what he's saying like he he wants sarah and the and weaver the other guy who was like working on the napalm and stuff who's a, a chemistry expert mm -hmm. and like he wants to keep them safe yeah. and protected because there's no replacing them if they get hurt mm -hmm. but he's keeping everybody against their will yeah and Under like, lock and key with armed guards. Guards, yeah, and you're not allowed to leave or do anything, and like literally underground. Like it, it's very like I don't, I don't even have a like good explanation or a good word for it. Like it's very um, uh, obsessive. Mm -hmm. Like very uh, like like he's not treating them like people. Like they're not people; they're commodities now. Yeah. Um. So. And as well as him, like what he's doing sort of makes sense. But it's like still not good. Yeah. So Deacon calls in a favor with O'Brien mm -hmm. and tries to break Sarah out, and it's gonna take her to Lost Lake. Um, they're gonna escape, but it all gets foiled. Yeah, they get caught in the process. Process. And yeah, and then um, Sarah or Deacon pretends that he was going to kidnap Sarah. That they don't, because nobody knows that they're actually married. So he pretends that he was kidnapping Sarah so that the general doesn't kill her. Mm -hmm. um, and then he he escapes with the help of another another guy who's like the colonel's batshit crazy. So we're just we're bouncing, and if you want to bounce with us, you can. Mm -hmm. So he goes back to Lost Lake. Deacon goes back to Lost Lake, gets Boozer, and they come up with a plan to take down the militia because the colonel has also decided he has learned from Schizo. Yeah, Schizo makes his way through the past. Yeah, just rats out. Lost Everybody, Lake. yeah. Finds out that there are other people out there and decides that all of these camps have to be eradicated. Um, um, he wants to be Noah's Ark, all of these yeah. people. Yeah, he's going on a crusade, and apparently anyone not in his camp is a sinner. Yeah. The, for yeah. whatever Whatever reason. reason. Like, has just decided that everybody else needs to die. And... Unfortunately, has the army and the weapons mm -hmm. necessary to do it. Like, got ta has tanks, has, or like you said, RPGs, has uh, mm -hmm. what they stumbled onto, like a, a military weapons cache in the beginning of the of the apocalypse or whatever, and like took all of it. Yeah. yeah. So they actually, as they're trying to make our way to them, like we get captured, we get freed by the guy. But while that's happening, they actually attack Lost Lake. Yeah. And that's when yeah, Iron Mike that's dies. That's when Iron Mike dies. We show up at the tail end and help fight him off, but, but Iron Mike is shot in the process. Yeah, so Iron Mike dies, and then we decide to go on this mission to take down the militia. And yeah, I mean, like, we're doing it to save Sarah and, and that kind of stuff, but everybody sort of joins in because the, he's still coming. He yeah. still has every intention of killing everyone, and if we don't try something, like, mm. he's going to... Um, yeah, Deacon actually puts like the Sarah things always in his mind. But he sort of puts on the back burner. Burner, but, yeah, for this yeah, uh, to which protect I was, the camp. I was surprised by, and also really liked that twist yeah. kind of thing. 
Because he definitely has friends there. Yeah. Like, Ricky and them used to ride together. Ricky, Boozer, and Deacon used to ride together. Yeah. And it's, it's implied that he spent a lot of time at Lost Lake before... Before he had the falling out with Iron Mike. Yeah. Um, so... So anyways, they come up with this brilliant plan, and they take out the militia. Mm-hmm. Like, um, yeah, they do. Yeah. Nice. They attack... It's sort of, yeah, it's, I, it's not a great, it, it's not a, a complex plan. They attack from one side and come and sneak in the other side and, and overrun them and end up killing the, well, actually, Sarah kills the colonel, yeah. doesn't she? Because she poisons him. Mm. Like, she poisons yeah. his tea. Deacon kills Gizzo with a knife, even though he had a bunch of guns. It's, I kind of get it, though. Gizzo deserved a lot worse. Yeah. <laughs> he, he made it personal. Yeah. Like, and throughout the game, like, Schizo's just sort of this, like, background character that becomes more and more annoying as you go through, mm-hmm. and you're just, like, you're just ready for him to die the whole time. Yeah. I do, like, most of the characters are kind of complex, because Schizo is annoying. Mm-hmm. He's... But he's, I mean, like, he's got a good backstory, and, like, yeah, you understand has, like, where he's coming from. Yeah. He actually has a good point, like, Iron Mike made a treaty with these people. They're not going to hold up onto it. Hold up. And and while we're sitting here expecting them to hold up on it, they're they're gathering supplies so that they can take us out. Mm. And he's not wrong. Yeah. Like, but then he turns into a piece of crap. Yeah. I guess like he gets mad and they kick him out, so they he rats them out. out and, yeah. Like he, he's because he's a complicated character, but but in the end, he's just not a, he's not a good guy. Yeah. I think. Um. But we kill him. Um. The the major is the major colonel. I don't know. Major, colonel, whatever. He's yeah. like... The guy in charge of Crater Lake managed to capture us by holding Sarah at gunpoint. Yeah. Then he sits us down. We're going to have tea. And he's going to talk. Pretty much the lecture at us. As, yeah. Um, and I still think the intention is to kill us at the end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's got his gun. He's just telling us why we have to die. I mean, it's, it's a classic villain monologue. Like, mm. that whole scene is a... Oh, the villain's monologuing. Um, but while he's monologuing, Sarah has slipped Hemlock into mm-hmm. his tea. Poison. Which was a nice callback to an earlier mission. Like, hey, we need you... Sarah sends Deacon on a mission. To Actually, get Hemlock. Actually, working on her cure. Like, you need to get this, but be careful. It's very Super poisonous. Super poisonous. Um, which is crap, by the way. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah whatever. It made, it made a good... Uh, but she um, poisons the tea. Yeah. And so... Um, <laughs> the colonel drinks it, offers some to... Deacon, Deacon's like, like, or Sarah's like, don't do it, Don't do it, man. Mm-hmm. Don't drink the tea. And, uh, oh. So we save everybody. We save Weaver, who then takes over the camp. Um, the guy who made the napalm mm-hmm. takes over the camp. And then, so after that, because it's open world, so there's this big, awesome, like, we saved everybody. We, you know, like, yeah, speech, speech and everything. And, 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 you know, and like, we're going to make the world a better place and all this stuff. And it's very uplifting, kind of a happy ending kind of thing. But if you play past that, <laughs> the game sort of f's you over. Mm, you get a few more side missions. Yeah, because there's definitely more stuff to do. Yeah. Like yeah, at this point, we had done everything. Yeah. Like well, there's still point. ambush camps. There's still like I mean, if you hadn't done everything, yeah. there's ambush camps. There's marauders. Like people from the different camps are still sending you. Like we'll still call you up every now and then and be like, hey, we've lost this person. Go find them. Or hey, we've you know like. Um, we need you to track this person down or, you know, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then, and then there's the hordes, which mm. we haven't talked about. Um, yeah. So the swarmers will like gather. Yeah. And if you happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, you'll sort of tor- turn a corner and there will be hundreds of them. Mm. <laughs> and, and the hordes become like a part of the story. Like they get marked later, you know where the yeah. hordes are and you can go horde hunting is what they call it. Um, so there's plenty of those left to do. Mm-hmm. Um, but then... <laughs> you get a call from O'Brien. Get a call from O'Brien. We're, we're not happy with him. Um, yeah, we're a jerk to O'Brien for, for no reason. reason. We are. We're mean to him for no reason. Right? Cause, the entire time. He's trying to help us. And... Yeah. I mean, to, to be fair, he's a little, he's a little nerdy, scaredy cat um, that is perfectly okay with us risking our lives, but is not going to risk his life. To the point, like, he can't, though. Yes, exactly. So we we are kind of a jerk to him um, on multiple occasions for no freaking yeah, reason. Because he showed up. Like, he flew into the area that had RPGs and could shoot down helicopters mm-hmm. to save us. But 
Deacon. But we'd already been caught. Yeah. So like, did he expect did he expect this little nerdy kid to jump yeah. out of the helicopter and start fighting everybody off? But he but Deacon was pissed about it. Yeah, but like we found Deacon's wife. If, yeah. Like, like we tracked her down and yeah. we're just a jerk him the entire time. The whole time we are. Anyway, we get a call from him. We go yeah. meet up with him. Yeah. And I I have been clear about this, right? That O'Brien is still working for Nero. But there's some sort of like upper echelon of Nero that like is doing something super shady and, and O'Brien wants to know more about it. Yeah, he's spying. And one of the things we learned, like all these different people we sort of spy on for Nero, for O'Brien, they don't seem to be communicating with each other. Yeah, nobody's no, like everything these people are doing is secret from each other. Like yeah. it's all being kept separate. Yeah, they all and they report up. But yeah, not but to not other. to each other. So O'Brien wants to know what everybody else is up to because he knows what he's working on and what he's found, mm. but he doesn't know what everybody else is up to, and he—that's what he's sending us to do. So this is like the final scene of the game or whatever. Is you show up to one last time to talk to O'Brien, and another thing that we haven't mentioned up until now is that O'Brien and all of the Nero people wear protective gear mm, like hazmat suits yeah they're all wearing hazmat suits so you can't see their faces you can't i mean like they they're even wearing respirators they're not breathing the air and when we're I, I was super curious the whole time through like why they're acting like being exposed would infect you because there's obviously people running around exposed 24 7 who have not turned into zombies mm -hmm. like so the air is obviously not infectious well we find out because <laughs> we show up and the whole time in the background of the game, O'Brien is sort of hinting that things are getting worse, that the freakers are mutating, that things are getting worse, that, that it's only going to get worse. The virus is evolving. That the virus is evolving, that it's only going to get worse from here. And then, so we show up, we're talking to O'Brien, we're giving him shit. O'Brien's trying to warn us that something is coming. And uh, and we're basically like, what, man? What's coming? Le leave me alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And O'Brien pulls off his mask, mm -hmm. and O'Brien is infected. It's you know it's obvious like he's he's lost yeah. all his hair. He's you know he looks like the freakers, mm -hmm. except he can talk mm -hmm. and, and have a rational conversation. Um, and O'Brien makes a couple of comments like they're coming. We don't know who they are. Yeah. Um, there's nothing we can do to stop them, mm -hmm. and I there's nothing anyone can do to help you, and. We're sort of, Deacon's like freaking out. Like he's yeah. sort of like, I mean, there's no escape at this point, but if. Yeah, because O'Brien oh, definitely looks smart. His voice gets this really yeah. double deep. Yeah, almost effect. as if like O'Brien's in there, but something else is in there too. Yeah. And like. He, he twitches a little bit. Yeah. But he, he seems like in control. control but... Yeah, most of the time. Just very sad. Mm. Um, but his voice. Yeah, he sort of loses, like, the voice mutates and then goes back to being O'Brien. Like, his body's kind of twitchy the way that the freakers are. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and he's talking about how, like, the they did this. Yeah, they knew this was happening. They knew this was happening. That's why all the research, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And, um, oh, and then, like I said, gives him this dire warning. You're screwed. They're coming. There's nothing anyone can do to save yeah. you. Which is big, like... Is he talking about this mutated version of, of the zombies? The zombies? Yeah, is he Nero? talking about Nero? Is Nero coming for us? Yeah, like, there's no, like, are these upper, you know, these upper management people coming for us? And coming for us, why? Like, mm -hmm. are they are they literally coming for the survivors, or are they just about to invade Oregon? What is, you know, like... Yeah. Um, and then, uh, uh, what, but then the helicopter starts to take off. And rather than stepping into the helicopter, O'Brien jumps into the helicopter after it's about 20 feet off the ground. Yeah. And Gorilla climbs into the helicopter. So, um, and that's sort of where it leaves it. We never see Sarah again, which was really freaking annoying and very inconsistent. Yeah. You like, see, after that last cutting was there, you don't see her wandering around at camp. Yeah, right. There's, there's nothing from Sarah. Like, we know she's alive. She's been mentioned. Like, she's living at Lost Lake. Um, but there, there's nothing else. Like, and the whole game is about Sarah, about mm -hmm. finding Sarah. And then at the end, we never see a last interaction 
between them after the whole thing's over with. We don't know what she's up to. We don't know what she's doing. I mean, is she still working on a cure? That would make sense given the the now perfect setup for Days Gone too. Yeah, hopefully there's one. Yeah. Oh my god, because if they leave that open <laughs> like that, that's going to make me nuts. Um, but that's, that's pretty much uh, the whole story. Yeah. Highly recommend, though. So, I mean, even if you know the story, like, the, the gameplay is so fun. Yeah. Like, so Let's talk about the gameplay. Yeah, it's sort of complicated. Yeah. So it's a third-person open-world yeah. game. You run around, you do these missions, you collect resources to craft, or yeah. like craft a menu. Huh. So that you can make bandages, so that you can make um, more potent firearms, so that you can make explosions. Melee weapons. Yeah, melee weapons. That, those were fun. <laughs> we had a good time putting those together. And at the beginning of the game, everything is very threatening. Yes. Because you don't, you don't have a lot of health, you don't have a lot of stamina, like your health doesn't refill really like you use bandage or health packs. Yeah, if you turn the wrong corner, like, you go and die. Yeah. Uh, at the beginning, a couple bullets will take you down. Yep. And it is very tense. It can be very, yeah. yeah. Especially at the beginning. Later on, you get upgraded. You get a lot of health, lots of stamina. On the normal difficulty, nothing's really a threat by the end of the game. Oh. That did not make it less tense for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> zombies are really scary. And, like, there's a lot of stuff going on, and then things would jump out of you, and then it was, it was mm -hmm. all scary. But it is a fun game. A lot of it towards the big chunk of mode that is very repetitive. Yeah, it does get a little repetitive. So like, it's before you really get into this Sarah stuff. Yeah. It's really before Lost Lake is. Oh. Bringing... Again, to be fair, we could have pushed the story fast along faster it if could've. we wanted to. But, but even even then, like the main story is like someone tells you to go somewhere. somewhere and yeah, something. yeah. It it got it got a little repetitive. The horde fighting was fun though. Did, yeah. Once you figure out how to do that, once you get strong enough to do it. It's, it's a good time. Yeah. As, as what the hordes are like, there are certain spots where they hang out. Mm -hmm. And there's hundreds of them at yeah. a time. And you have to go and just wipe them all out. Yeah. And at the very beginning, you don't have a lot of stamina. You don't have a lot of ammo. You don't have a lot of strong weapons. I mean, yeah. It's basically impossible. Mm -hmm. And they will they will dogpile you and tear you apart. Yeah. Um, um, as you get farther into the game... Which is why I think the hordes like become a thing later in the game. When they mark them. Yeah. Um, it's more interesting to go like try and hunt these these um, freakers down where they like you find them all together kind of mm -hmm. thing. And oh, we had fun. Uh, one time we found a cave through a distractor in front of it. So all the all these freakers come <laughs> running out of the cave and they're all jumping on what is basically an alarm clock going off. And then we just threw napalm at them, and mm -hmm. they all burned to death, and that was it. That was the end of the horde, and that was kind of awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, you're also your bike adds a lot of stress in the beginning because mm -hmm. you can upgrade your bike as you go, but later on, beginning you don't have a large fuel tank. Yeah, so you, you if you to, run out of fuel, yeah, and you had to use fuel to fast travel. Yeah, but there's you had to stop and get fuel constantly in the beginning, mm -hmm. which yeah. is be stressful if you're driving, you run out of fuel, and there's a bunch of zombies around. Yeah, uh, and you don't have a, you don't have a lot of stamina. You don't have a lot of ammo. Like, um, we definitely got into some sticky situations mm. in the beginning. Um, Very fun. This is one of the few games I would think might be better to play on a higher difficulty. Yeah. Because starting off is tense, but by the end of it, nothing mattered. Yeah, that's kind of true. Like we'd walk into ramp ambush camp, and it got to the point where I would use the melee weapon on everyone. I would just run out in the open and, mostly. Yeah. And it was let them shoot efficient. us. Yeah. yeah. Let them shoot us and, and take everybody down. Because we were never out of bandages. And by the time we got our health up, like we could take a bunch of shots. Lots, yeah. So yeah, I have to agree with you there. Towards the end, like if you if you wanted to keep the game sort of tense and scary, you needed to play yeah. on a higher difficulty. And the hordes, while like, initially are intimidating, once you figure out that they walk at the same pace as you, like you don't have to sprint to get away from them, you can just walk. Yeah. Like, they won't you won't they you won't, won't gain enough, ground or yeah, lose ground. ground. But so you won't put enough distance between you and them that you can really like turn around and do any damage to them. Like, but you guys could literally walk in a circle together for yeah. like so if, ever. If your stamina is low, you just take a little walk. They won't catch you. Let your stamina build up. Take off in front of them and do what you need to do. No. Um, 
on the other hand, it was always tense for me because yeah. zombies are scary. Yeah, because you're scared of zombies. Yeah. Um, the, uh, and the graphics are very... Mm-hmm. Um, the, they're very scary. Like, the um, yeah. the sound effects, the, the way that they move, the way that they, they group together, the way that they operate, both sing as a singular individual and as a group like when you get a whole bunch of them together it's very yeah. oh, um, which I thought was kind of impressive because you'd, you'd have hordes and like you'd have 30 of them chasing you from one way and like 30 of them would think to go the other way and come around like and you know it's like sometimes you'd have them come in from both sides kind of mm-hmm. thing because they all act individually even when they're acting as a horde which I thought was impressive yeah. that the game had that that kind of yeah, one one of my favorite things to do in the game or lots of times I'd go to a camp full of bad guys mm-hmm. you can lure the zombies oh, there and the, just let them take care of the camp for the, you the bear was the best yeah. the rager the infected <laughs> bear that followed us into a camp and then we hid and let the rager kill everybody mm-hmm. that was awesome yeah. <laughs> that's funny like like they don't team up they don't like if zombies show up the Marauders or whatever camp you're in, or the who are the cutty people? Rippers. The rippers. If they see zombies, they'll start attacking the zombies. Okay. Just give you a chance to sneak around, around. and do it, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, which was also a good like if we're shooting at somebody and we realized that they weren't shooting at us, it was a good time to hide because mm-hmm. it meant there were <laughs> there was something worse than us around the corner. Because yeah. there was that one time we wandered into a camp and like. We wandered in just as like a horde wandered in, yeah. and then everybody just died. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, well, I guess we don't have to take care of this <laughs> camp anymore. <laughs> like I said, I wish my only complaint with the whole game is like the sense of escalation. Because mm-hmm. towards the end, I, mean, I got a little bored towards the middle, just running those missions. But towards the end, like where nothing mattered. Yeah, where everything was just sort of easy. Yeah, but, you know, like we were playing on normal difficulty, so we we're playing a hard difficulty. It might have made a difference and it's kind of just like they introduced the the big guys the, mm-hmm. the breakers the breakers and they introduced these screamers which can knock you off oh yeah the screamers were creepy and like the sound will summon more zombies zombies yeah but they never combined those with anything yeah and they were never in the hordes too yeah the breakers always hung out by themselves the screamers would sometimes be on the outskirts of a horde mm. um the screamers are like if you ran into a screamer, they could summon a horde. Hor- basically, yeah. That's what would happen if you ran into a screamer. And then the Reachers, the ones that go really, really fast, they were never part yeah. of the hordes. At least, I only found like four of them throughout the whole, the whole game, game after they were introduced. Um, I think it re- introduced really late in the game, yeah. too. Oh. It's like, it would add more to the horde. Like, if it was a Reacher that could outpace you while you're trying to run from the horde, the horde that, that, would, would, that would screw you up, yeah. yeah. And the, the Breakers, one-on-one... Once you get certain upgrades, like you do more damage after a melee hit. Mm-hmm. Once you get that, they they go down fast. Yeah. But if they were part of a horde, like they could ram into you and knock you down. And yeah. Hordes coming up on you, like that would make things a lot more intense. Yeah. True. Oh, um. Oh, I just really want. I mean, they need to make a second one. Mm-hmm. I need. I need to know what happens. Yeah, I would love to see a second one. Want, yeah, it was a really great game to play because we spent like what two weeks playing it. Yeah, we put a lot of hours into it. it. Yeah, and we had it was a really good time. We bought it on sale, mm-hmm. which was perfect. I say probably worth full price. Yeah, but it does go on sale pretty often. So like if, said, if you see it on sale, just, just grab it. Yeah, it's a great game. Yeah, and we actually didn't give away everything. There's a lot of little pieces to the story that we didn't yeah. talk about. Yeah, a lot of side characters. There's, oh. Riggy's the best. Yeah, Riggy is the best. I like that it was inclu- like it was inclusive of gay people too. Mm-hmm. Like you see, we have a gay relationship. Um, a bi, a bi character which you yeah. hardly ever ever see. Ever see? Um, um, oh, lots of strong women. Lots of strong women. Um, um, and nobody really being a douchebag about women either, which is pleasant. Nobody, mm-hmm. um, like. Being like, oh, you're a girl, you need to go back to the camp, kind of thing. Yeah, there's no like openly that. sexist. Yeah. Um, yeah, which is nice. Yeah, like, the only camp that's run by a lady. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, the worst camp is yeah. run by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, we highly recommend, which is why we made this video. Yeah. Because it's awesome. Yeah. We had a great time playing it.
It was very fun. Yep. She Jacqueline was it. super mad about it because <laughs> she doesn't like shooting games. We played it forever. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, towards the end, it gets easier, but it's tense enough to make Kitty pace around the room. Oh, yeah. I was, there were definitely moments where I was just like, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. Like, I, it there, got me a couple of times. Yeah. There was, there was some cool moments. And there were cool scripted moments, mm-hmm. but there were cool moments that you stumble upon. Like, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna take you out of this camp. You look over, we see a horde covered in snow. Oh, yeah. you, you oh. oops! <laughs> yeah, I saw Kitty the not see. Oh yeah, that was. And like, oh, we gotta go now. Oh, we gotta go. <laughs> like, why? Why are we running? Right. She'll pull up the monoculars. Oh, 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 we running. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fun. Definitely worth it. Yeah. And hopefully they make a second one. Yeah. God, oh, I gotta know what happens. What happened <laughs> with Nero? Yeah. Those bastards. But there's also there's no microtransactions. Hmm. There's no microtransactions. Like the game's not trying to sell you anything. Yeah, that, yeah. Like, there's no, like, costume, there's no loot crates, right, there's so, no, yeah. you can't buy experience. Just, yeah, which is kind of nice. You yeah. have to earn everything, um, it's, and you can't, you can't buy supplies either. Like, the crafting supplies, you can't buy them at the camps. Well, I'm seeing more, like, real world money. Oh, yeah. It's very rare for games nowadays, like, you buy a game, you get the whole game. Yeah. Like, with, like, like example, you don't have to, yeah. Assassin's Creed, mm, which, yeah. love the Assassin's Creed game. But you can spend real world money to buy experience, to buy crafting supplies, to buy weapons and costumes, yeah. an expansion pass. And Which is yeah. This oh. way, you buy it, you, you have the game. Yeah, they actually the game. they Enjoy. release free challenges. Like, oh yeah, we haven't played any of the challenges. Yeah. We should give that a try. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. Should go and buy it. Yep. That's okay. that's, that's our pretty pretty much our review. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, guys, thanks for listening. Yeah, we'll do reviews for other games soon. Yep. Bye! Bye!
Thank <laughs> you. 